Joining us on the sofa is a whole heap of trouble. It is Rowan Ricketts. How are you doing? Lovely. Is that how you agree in me? Yeah, yeah, that's how, that's how, this I is like how it's going. I'll yeah. leave the trouble. <laughs> now, uh, you two were asked to sit closer together. You know, Sorry, give each we've other, got to do it even give, closer. Give each, give each other a hug. Give each other a hug. Come <laughs> on, it's all good. It's it, it all good. It was fine before I'm only messing with you. <laughs> um, OK, you, Rowan, have just tweeted. Have they, they've announced uh, the England team for tomorrow, have they? Have they? I don't know. Oh, okay, no. The, you tweeted about the squad then. You weren't happy with the selection. Is that right? Um, I don't know if I tweeted about it. I haven't seen it yet. No, oh, okay. I like right. it. Putting words in my yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah. Miss it. I like that. And tell me, tell me, do you know the squad? Do you know anyone that's in it? The squad? Right the right team? Go on. <laughs> I don't know what's. No, apparently you tweeted about the squad. No, I haven't. Oh, I got the wrong row and Rick. Have you got Hang on, this? hang on. Blame, blame those two at the back again yeah. if you want to. Just the, the, those two at the back there. Yeah. Human error is good. Wow. It makes yeah. good TV. It can happen. Okay, yeah. so what have you been up to? I've been travelling. Uh, came back from Bangladesh. Um, Which is where you're playing at the moment, where right? Where I was playing. Right. I came back because I had enough. It was like very hard to deal with. I've been playing abroad for like seven years, seven, eight years. And I enjoyed the journey. Some mm -hmm. ups and downs, but. The last straw was when I went to Bangladesh. I was signed in Thailand. They started messing around with the salary. And Bangladesh was two hours away. So I jumped on a plane, went over there, and it was literally, like, I'm very humble. And I played in some places that are terrible. And obviously, I played in big stadiums like Old Trafford. But when I got there, it was just, like, it was just the way the people were. They were very ignorant to new things. Okay. They didn't want to water the pitch, which was, like, concrete. <laughs> um, they just didn't understand the basics of football. And... They didn't want to learn, and that was the problem, because I'm 33 and I'm still trying to learn. So let's take it all the way back. You are one of only four players in history that have moved from Arsenal to Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with Arsenal's. Arsenal, what was it like? What were your best experiences? Um, I remember when I was a young boy, I was 10 years old, and they picked me up, went training with them. And I remember at 12, and not a lot of people know this, my dad, and you've probably been through this yeah. with your son, um, in terms of managing his development, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I got let at 12 saying that not to come back and then they changed the staff and I think um is it Bruce Riok? Yeah. Yeah Bruce Riok came in and then they brought all the bo boys back in. It was just a six week period and got two different letters. So that was a big turning point and then I went on and had some great coaches. Dermot Drummy who's now down at Crawley Town. Wow. Um, Neil Bamfield who's yeah, now one Bamfield, of the assistants. Yeah. It was an amazing coach and great, great Don Howe, who was like I was so sad when he died, cried tears. Um, and then also Arsene Wenger gave me my debut at 18, but it was just a great journey. We won two youth cups, <coughs> played with some great players like Jermaine Pennant, um, David Bentley, he was phenomenal. Steven Sidwell was there, Jerome Thomas, Jay Boffroy, and Jeremy Allardy, many more. But it was just a great learning experience, and me and Troy was talking outside, and I learned so much just um, about myself as a person, and things that I think professional football players and parents, or wannabe players when mm. they're young, forget the journey, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. where everyone wants to make it and wants to flash cars and that, but you pick up so many life skills along the way, um, or, you can, or you don't, but there's so many life skills you can pick up and, like, take them into your life. Because not everyone, all those players I was playing with, I believe about 70, 80% of them or more never made it, and some quality players. So, talk to me about being a 12-year-old in English football. And do you feel you made the right progress and you were supported through that progress? Because we've been talking a lot with Troy and with Gordon about this sort of inherent problem we have with grassroots. So for you personally, what was it like? You said you've got two letters in two weeks, uh, in six weeks, sorry. I mean, as a 12-year-old, how did you mentally deal with that? Well, we were saying outside there's a big responsibility on the parents. So my dad didn't actually tell me that at the time. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, I come from a, a very, <laughs> yeah, very old school type of upbringing, Jamaican family. So my dad's very, he's cold. I was talking about it today. He's never ever said, I love you, ever. Do you know what I mean? But I know he loves me for his yeah, actions. Yeah. So he managed me in a way where I was, he's very strict. So I wasn't allowed to just roam the streets. Um, I was always playing football in a pen. But then at a certain time when the lights went down, I had to be back over at the flats and waiting for him. Or, <laughs> <laughs> and you like, were South London you knew as, that well. Sound as well. Yeah, yeah. He, he never hit me, but I just knew that yeah. it could come. You, you knew what's going on. Yeah. So it just—it was a very important. I was always outside playing football. Yeah. And that doesn't happen that much. Um, no, it doesn't now. Gordon was speaking about before about the, the kids now and the social media and the technology, and parents. So obviously, I understand they've seen a lot of things on the news, but they still got to allow them because that playground is where they're going to hone a lot of their crafts. You, there's certain things you cannot teach. So when you're in the, because it's, it's a part of one's personality. Uh -huh. 
So when people are doing these drills and they're doing five turns and they're doing these cutbacks, these things they've got to learn in the playground or not learn. You can't go and take a kid and tell him to. It's never going to come to him naturally. And a lot of the things that I do in my game, they came from there on, on the other that. players. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. very important to, for the parents to manage that and allow them that time to go and have fun and experiment and make mistakes. Okay. Could I add Andros to the Arsenal Tottenham list? Yeah, go on. Because Arsenal released him as an eight-year-old because he was too small. Yeah. He's in there because he was too small. Eight. Eight. That's crazy. Wasn't Harry as well? Harry was Harry. Yeah, Harry moved from Arsenal. Well, okay. got left. Yeah, yeah Harry oh, wow. left Arsenal and then Tottenham picked him up. But it was funny because Andros played against Arsenal in the FA Youth Cup, um, and in the stands is Arsene Wenger and all the top top people from Arsenal, all the top people from Tottenham, and he's having a really good game. He creates the opening goal and uh, he's giving the fullback an absolute torrid. Um, and I have this on on good authority because David Pleat kind of sneaked it out that. Arsene Wenger tapped uh, the senior scout at Arsenal and said, uh, who's, who's the lad? <laughs> um, and he had to say, well, yeah, he, we had him in the academy and we let him go. So that's, that's his little piece of story, you know, of, of being a, an Arsenal Tottenham man. But it's funny because, you know, who can judge someone as an eight-year-old? Who can judge? Who can judge your qualities? Really, as a 12-year-old, you know, yeah. being released and stuff like that. It's a, it's a harsh industry. And I'm not quite sure we prepare our youngsters for that level of the game particularly the rejection level of the game. Um, you know, I was someone that was rejected at 18 and I'd never suffered rejection before because I always thought I was going to be a footballer. That was it. That was my life mapped out. But I don't think we prepare our young players for that stage I either. I think we've got two issues, haven't we? Is that we build all these People young up. players up yeah. and then they're sort of left in a no man's land of where do we go next, which I suppose is the option for going abroad. But also, how difficult was it for you, Troy, because you know exactly mm. what's happening. Mm. You've been there, you knew what was going to happen with Andros. He could make it, he could not. How difficult was it for you to watch the whole thing well, unfold? Well, it was just to keep him on the straight and narrow. I think, you know, I had a, because uh, I coach as well, so I had a lad that was released by Arsenal who was the club that he supported as a nine-year-old. Mm. And this lad developed asthma, he, he bloomed, and, and you know, a year later you couldn't notice him as a footballer. Because again, once they release you, they just say, thank you very much, you know, you're no longer no with us. No one helps you get to yeah, another place, yeah. yeah. So with Andros, we, you know, it didn't matter that he was released from Arsenal. He went back to Ridgeway, went and played with Jonathan over there. <laughs> uh, he was the same goalie then as what he is now. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and he just went, went back and enjoyed himself. Six months later, he was in, he was in at Tottenham. Um, the team broke up. Um, and he went back into Tottenham, and we had to manage that. I mean, he loved his football to the neglect of his education, ah. which was the same as me, but he just loved his football. And, but it is, it's a fine line. The industry is an absolute fine line. Um, someone might like you, someone might not like you, you know, and, it, and it, that's the way that it is. And it doesn't necessarily, Ron, you must know this as well, it's not as much, of course it's about your quality as a player, but a lot of the time it's a, a whole package that you provide and people like you. It's the same in the world, isn't it? People like you and dislike you, so it is hard as a footballer to know that actually you are that good, but someone just doesn't see it in you. Yeah, and that's why it's important that there's a great um, education coming from the parents and how you present yourself, how you speak, your, your conduct, even how you dress. All these things go a long way. I remember Jermaine Pennant, very, very talented 15-year-old, extremely talented, yeah, most, yeah. one of the most talented players I've played with. And, I remember when he used to come to train, he was bought for two million pounds. That's right. Yeah. It was from Notts County. That's right. Yeah. And I remember he turned up and he was like riff raff. Do you know what I mean? And he, <laughs> if he was here, he'd start laughing with his big ears. And <laughs> he's had his, he had his Reebok classics out, <laughs> big tongues, and he's just rolling around. But he was so gifted, and he was lucky that he was so gifted, the most probably gifted in the bunch. That I remember Liam Brady used to come in and say, "Hey, lad." You need to sort yourself out, lad. <laughs> what you accent is that? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm trying my best. Anyway. Help me. Help me, brother. Right? I've always, I've always an Irish man. Well done. Okay, anyway, but go yeah, on. Sorry um, to crash the story. You know, the guy, the Scottish, we were going to have to apologise for them swearing, but I think we may have to do a, a national apology for your accent. <laughs> oh no. no, no, keep going. Keep going. With the story. Sorry. Go on, keep going. We're listening. So yeah, so <laughs> Liam Ray used to always come in and he's always pull him up on how he presented himself and he's. He was not really punctual. He'd come in, he had egg McMuffin dripping on his top. And, he, and this is real stuff. But he was lucky. And, he, and I remember he used to use Stephen Sidwell, who wasn't the necessarily most talented, naturally gifted one. But I used him as an example. And you got, I give so much credit to City. I played with him for years in central midfield. He's had probably the best career, most consistent uh, career yeah, of all yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah. But he was the least naturally gifted one. But he was on time, he was well dressed, he spoke well, great manners. So I think it's very important that young players 
and the parents, because I said we're saying outside, yeah. the parents got major responsibility. They think it's all on the coaches. They're at what training what two hours? Okay, now popping up on the magic screen is Chris Starwin. Amazing. Darwin. 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 Oh, Darwin. <laughs> I gave you I gave you a star. You are a star in my eyes, Chris. How you doing? I'm very well, how are you? I am good. Now you're from the Costa Blanca, everyone wants me to say that. So how's the Costa Blanca today? <laughs> Yeah, out here on the Costa Blanca. Is that one of the places you haven't played, Rowan? Oh, he's asking Rowan? if that's one of the places you haven't played. I haven't played there yet. Why you got to me out there? <laughs> Are you having a dig at me, Geese? <laughs> no, 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 you'd be more than welcome to come and have a game out here, mate. We need Hello, all the time. Yeah. You speak Spanish? You don't need to speak Spanish. Plenty of English. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> it's all right. Rowan's fluent, though. In Irish. <laughs> 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 OK, now, Chris, let's talk about the <coughs> England game tomorrow night. What do you make of the squad selection and who do you think are your starting 11 tomorrow? Wow, two, two, two big questions. Um, I think Southgate was on a bit of a hiding to nothing either way. He could have changed it all and probably got a lot of criticism from the press or he's stuck with what everyone seems to know and he's got a lot of criticism from the press. So, uh, Southgate, really, he's got... He, he, it's not a great game for him either, Malta. He's, he's, he's bound to win but equally if they don't play well he's still going to get criticism uh, in terms of the squad itself uh, it's, I mean let, let's let's pick up Andrew Townsend obviously uh -huh. that, <laughs> that, 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 that plays on the wing for Palace so yeah, decent it. decent <laughs> right, but no, I mean it's great, it's great to see him get a chance back in the squad because he's probably in fairness played better for England than he, the chances he was Steady. getting in trouble. so no, you're right you're right um, so it's great to see him getting getting another chance, and with the likes of Lilana dropping out uh, in the last sort of 24 hours, you never know he might actually get some pitch time as well, which would be great. Squad-wise, it's not very inspiring, but then they, this team sort of got themselves into this mess. So let's see if they can get themselves out. I suppose. Really looking forward to seeing Rooney line up in the in the in the middle of the park, though. Isn't isn't that going to be fun for everyone if we want to play a high tempo game? OK, Troy, what do you think your starting 11's going to be? Let's go for Andros in. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, that's the easy one. Um, I'd start young Marcus Rashford. Got it. Um, I just think the lad, you can't stop him at the moment. Yeah. So I think we still have to manage his career properly because, you know, the, all the plaudits and everything, but I'd start young Marcus. I think the back four picks itself. You've got Carl Walker, you've got Danny Rose. You got Gary Cahill, who's not really in good form at the moment. Anyone so that's care that Jagielka's different... injured? No, I don't think anyone does. <laughs> uh, and you've got John Stones, who's performing better than all of them at the moment. Yep. So we look good in there. I think it's what he does in the middle of the park that's going to be the big thing. You've got Eric Dyer, who hasn't been playing much lately. Will he start? You've got Jordan Henderson. Um, Delhi's got to start. Delhi Ali's got to start. Yeah. So have I picked enough players? Well, yet? we've got to talk. Um, we've got to talk. Go on, Rooney. Rowan, you answer it. <laughs> Rooney, uh, uh, people have been giving him slack. I think it's the usual thing you see when someone's kind of on a decline yeah. age-wise in their career. For me, I like Rooney playing in central midfield. Um, I appreciate what he brings to the game, what he brings to the team. He's passing range. It's fantastic. But I think maybe people... Are, what happens is when Rooney, he's been, in, like you could say, a superstar all his career. Yeah. So now we're comparing him against him. Not necessarily against what other people are doing. Everyone is comparing him against G him. Against himself, what, what he's done before. And it's like he's not the same guy, he's not got the same you say, explosivity in his legs, but his passing range is fantastic. His passing decisions has been good for me. So, I mean, he's been a central midfielder. So, what do you think, Because you've gone silent. Chris, tell us what you think about Rooney. With, with Rooney, I mean, I guess it depends how you want the England team to play. If they want to play, um, they want to play this high-pressing game, which is everyone's on vogue sort of favourite thing to do at the minute, you can't play Rooney in midfield. He, he doesn't have the legs. Yeah, he's got experience. Yeah, he's got quality at times. And you probably want to keep him in the squad. But if you want to have your team pressing and, and getting into the opposition's defences or their faces, you've got to have your likes of Deli Ali. You've got to have your Jordan Hendersons. You've probably got to have your Deer as well as your, your midfield three, just to really give yourself the base to be able to go and do that. Yeah, I'll disagree with you when you say that he doesn't have the legs because I think you've been someone who grew your son in the English football. We, many of us in English football, maybe even Gordon would agree, Busquets is someone that yeah. I think many people would have looked him over the years. In this country, he probably never made it because we would have said he doesn't have the legs, he doesn't have enough bite. But I think within the right system and the right strategy and the right tactics, Rooney can still be effective. 
It's funny. Fair, fair, fair comment. Uh, what I'd also say is, though, if you look at the style of football he's playing at United, Mourinho doesn't have them playing every week in the way that the England team looks like it might be progressing towards playing. So you've got players like Ali, you've got players like Lallana, you've got players like even Daniel Sturridge, who are in a system week in, week out, where they are basically told just to press, press, press. Whereas at United, certainly last year under Van Hal, I don't think they chased a man down once. And equally, with, uh, with the way that Mourinho's playing so far this year, it is a little bit more sort of stepped back. That would be my only point with Mourinho. The thing for me is we just got to play the form players, players that are in form. Have I we seen so. enough change? I know it's really difficult for Gareth Southgate to come in mm. right now, but have we seen enough change in the last couple of months from the Euros? I think there's still a Euro hangover. I don't, you know, we watched Sam's one game in charge and really and truthfully, was anyone impressed with England on that day? I think um, they're just finding it mentally hard, aren't mental, they? I think they find it mentally hard in the Premier League as well. You look at some of the players are not playing to the, to, you know, to the height of their level. Um, I think some of the fans have not forgiven them yet and that's a massive pressure. But I think tomorrow might be the perfect game to get not to get fans back on board, but to give the players the confidence again. There's an opportunity. Scotland beat Malta 5-1, 5-1 away from home. So, it's, so it England be. have got to get five plus. And I think if that's the case, then we may just start to trust the, the squad again. Andros, Andros is going, no pressure, cheers, Dad. <laughs> um, Rowan, what do you make of that kind of pressure? You've been in those situations before. You've played for these big clubs that when fans turn against you, they turn badly. And that's what's happened. What do you, what, as a player, what kind of pressure do you feel when fans turn? And not the bad language either. No, 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 yeah. um, you talk about his accent again. <laughs> I just, people have got to remember that. Football obviously is a lot on it in terms of his people's jobs on the line, like gaffers, because they can get fired quickly. But at the end of the day, I think it's just we've got to remember it's a game. It's a game that we all love. And I think the fans, and now, like Gordon was saying, the social media effect has put so much pressure on them. So that fun aspect is gone. Then they can't be themselves. Mm -hmm. I've been in dress rooms that have turned and gone sour. You cannot be yourself anymore. So we, us talking about, I think sometimes the media is sometimes part of the problem. You're not actually helping the players because what, what makes what's going to make the English audience or the English fans what's going to make us happy? What if they win something or what are we actually looking for? Because that's why when people are talking about Arsene Wenger becoming the manager, mm. I'd rather not see him as a manager. Mm. Mm. I'd rather see him as a consultant or as a director and have a bigger influence over a longer um, period of time. Okay, so I've got a question for you about Glenn Hoddle, but before, what do you think went wrong at the Euros? Was it just that immense social media media pressure? No, they didn't, fin they didn't finish their chances in the game against Iceland. They didn't play too well. But the other games, I thought England played well. They played well, good football, intricate stuff. There's some good individual displays. But they didn't finish their chances. That, that's what was. They had loads of chances. I didn't think they had a plan B. I didn't think they went into the competition. I didn't think Roy Hodgson went into the competition knowing his system, who his best, what his best team was, and then didn't know how to change it as you well. Really think that, Chris, you're yeah. nodding. You agree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think uh, right up until the well, right up until the end of the very final warm-up game, there was still no, yeah. no real clear plan from on how the side was going to play. The plan against Wales was, and it's fair, it used to work for Ferguson, but just keep chucking on a striker until we get an, until we get another goal. We did create chances. I think the first game we played in the tournament was actually one of the most positive England yeah. performances I've seen for ages. I but agree. we didn't take the chances. Yeah. But for whatever reason, against Iceland, you could just see that once the initial sort of let's just try and play great attacking football stuff wasn't working there was no plan b we went into the squad with no width so the so the minute the, the playing down the middle didn't work for us we didn't have your players out on the out on the flanks that could be a man one-on-one -on -one and create something different so so yeah i mean i'd say the plan a was pretty sketchy and the plan b was non-existent <laughs> chris thank you so much i know you've got a wealth of knowledge that we wanted to get from you but we've got so much to get on so thank you so much for joining us it's been great to have you on cheers chris yeah, see you later. Bye. OK, we are going to take a quick break. We have got loads more to get through, so don't... Oh, we're not going to take a quick break. Uh, sorry, Troy, I was trying to get you off the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you make of Michael Keane being called up, the Burnley defender? Well, you, listen, uh, I think Gareth's going safe with players that he's worked with before. He knows, At right? the under-21 level. And there's not a whole pool of English talent out there for, for any English manager to go and pick. So, again, I'm saying pick players in form. Michael Keane's doing well. Burnley are doing well. 
uh, give him an opportunity. He's not necessarily going to play, but who knows? If England are uh, the amount of goals up that I think they should be, he might be able to throw the lad on for a bit of experience at Wembley for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I'm not saying that that's the be-all and end-all, but there's not... You know, I'm going to mention this because Crystal Palace fans will have a go at me. If okay. Scott Dan was fit, yeah. Scott Dan should be in that England squad because of how well he's done. And I think Palace have got a number of good English players that could be involved in that squad. We've but been I'm saying learning. about Scott Dan a while, Right, actually. exactly. But I've been learning that Palace players apparently don't get picked for England. Punch. I'm not sure why. Okay, so we will... Oh, okay, I've got so much to talk to you about. Punch. So do you think that it is sort of an elitist way of picking for the England squad? Do you think that unless you're part of a big club... I'm going to leave that to you because I, I, I'm a bit, you know, yeah, I, I, I've got problems here. So. I've got problems. Get them off your chest first. <laughs> <laughs> they call, they call this sofa counselling, so well, come on. It, uh, I'll let, I'll let, I'll let. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense, it is. The bigger club you play for, the more opportunities you're going to get. But Michael Keane's come in now from Burnley. Um, I'm saying Scott Dan. Scott Dan has been consistently one of the best sent halves. But is he an English sent half that people look at and think, I'll have him because he's playing for Crystal Palace? So. It does benefit you playing for Man United, Arsenal and all those top clubs. I'm going to take Andros for an example as well. So he says when, that he gave up his time at Newcastle in favour of his England call-ups. In, in favour of playing back in the Premier League and it would give him the better opportunity to Can represent his country. Can we just get this country. on the screen then? Uh, this is who has been missed out. The, England on form. England Townsend. on form, sorry. Punchins in. England on form. England on form. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm, I'm all right now. I'm on the edge of my seat. Troy Deeney, Watford. Look at the consistency of Troy Deeney um, over the last season and a bit. We've got our two fullbacks, Walker, Rose, our two fullbacks. Obviously, you wouldn't put young Pickford in there, it's too much for him, but you know, you've got your fullbacks. Curtis Davis has done well, but they're in unfashionable clubs. What do we make of Walcott? Because this was his year. If, it wasn't, if he wasn't going to do it now, he was never going to do it. And he is kind of doing it, isn't he? I think um, Roy Keane said something the other night. It's been and a week. Yeah. It's been a week. Easy. Twelve months, season, nine, whatever it is, show me his consistency. Has he got it in him? He should have. Okay. He should have, but no, he, he, he hasn't he, proved he, it. He damn well should have. Yeah, he should have, but I wouldn't play him there because he's not a centre forward. Um, Rowan, thoughts on this? Yeah, walk up for me is a weird one. I remember seeing him as a 17-year-old and I've always thought he was a very, very impulsive. Yeah. Player, so he's not the brightest football player. I mean, like I think Arsenal Wenger knew that it was yeah. trying to work him yeah, in, and yeah. it's like Henri when he turned up at Arsenal, he wasn't he necessarily worked. the brightest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. thrown out in the right. He wasn't a success in the beginning, um, and I think he's hoping for the similar similar type of um, impact with Walker, but it's just not regular enough. I think on the right, um, Sanchez playing at the top has allowed them to stretch teams more and allows them more spaces to penetrate. But I'm I'm not a big Walker fan. But I was going to touch on something. Um, yeah. about You said about the players getting selected from smaller teams. I'm going to give you a great example, because yeah. I talk about this a lot on my social media accounts. Tom Huddleston, one of the best, most cultural central midfield players this country's had for years. Okay? Yeah. This boy was playing in the England squad. He was playing regularly for, for, for Spurs. Quality football player. Lovely gentleman, lovely gentleman. And then all of a sudden, he moved, because he wasn't getting enough games with another coach, to Hull. Could have went to Everton. A lot of people don't know. He could have went to Everton. He went to Hull. Then all of a sudden, Hull get relegated. He's still the same player. He just wasn't the pick for one of the gaffers. I forgot the gaffer that took yeah. over Spurs. Didn't play him. So he moved. And that's what players we want to do play. Beat, yeah. But he leaves. Same guy, same appetite for football. Then all of a sudden, Eric Dyer comes in. Mm -hmm. Good football player as well. He's flipped past um, Tom. Tom is not even considered again mm. for England. So when I said this on my social media account, they said, I'm crazy, There's, they're not even close. And that's how we've been kind of um, clouded, but the a public. Lot of, a lot of fans, yeah, a lot of the fans, public, whatever you want to call them, actually just watch football on social media. They sure. don't watch it live. They don't, they don't live. Live. Or they watch Match of the Day, the two and a half minutes, and say that player had an absolute stormer. He should be, you know, so yeah. you're right. It, it is... It's, it's, it's a fan-dominated sport now. Now that social media has come on board, we're allowing the opinion of, of, of fans. And we're to be fair, we're driving a lot of players who, who you know, want to engage with fans and, and have an opinion. We're driving them off as well. So, but I'm liking the look of that team. That would beat Malta tomorrow, that team. Walcott, maybe somewhere else, but that would beat Malta. <laughs> and that would get the goals that I expect tomorrow as well. Okay. So.
<laughs> Rowan's negotiating a contract with Gordon. He's only back on. Sorry, can we stop this? Because Rowan's got serious business to talk about now. We'll talk about that in a bit. We'll talk about that in a bit. Welcome back to us here at Fan TV. Now, you've just said you're hungry for football. So what is next? We don't know. Gordon's always... Gordon, come on, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, at the moment, I came, back in the, I came back to England two months ago. I'm hungry to play football still. Um, I've always kept that hunger burning inside of me. And I'm, it doesn't matter what level I'm going to play at, whether it's in the conference, whether it's League Two. I spoke to some League Two teams. It could be a conference team, someone that's um, looking for a player like me. And I can go in there, whether, whether it's helping them with my experience, um, still got good legs. I'm just hungry to play, so, yeah, if any gaffers are about. Yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, let me know about just it. putting it out there. We're going to put it out on our social media now. Uh, Ro Rowan needs a gig. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've been talking to a few clubs, but sometimes you don't find the right thing. And it's not necessarily the money. Sometimes it could be the coach has just got a different way he wants to play me and it doesn't make sense. And I'm not going to say to him, yeah, I'm going to play there just to get some money. Do you know what I mean? OK, well, thank goodness for Wikipedia. This is uh, where you've travelled to, Rowan. Oh, this Lord. is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what was the most... Uh, let's go with what was the best experience of your life away from home that I can broadcast, please. <laughs> uh, that's an amazing experience in Ecuador. Really? Unbelievable. A lot of music, a lot of salsa, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Football? Football, football wise, mm, it was good. <laughs> I, was, I had a great time in Ireland. We yeah. won the league. Is that where you learned that, that fantastic accent? accent? Yeah. Yeah. Good old, good old, I, was, I was in Dublin, in Tala. Good old Tala. Yeah, so um, India was amazing. Yeah. Got to see snakes on the training ground. <coughs> that little baby milk snakes. <laughs> Thailand, amazing. There's snakes on a plane, now there's snakes on the training yeah, ground. This, this place there, yeah. worst place. You're done with Bang that. Bangladesh, don't even connect there. It's real, it's serious, don't worry. Because um, uh, I just got a phone call from the tourism board. They wanted you to do a video. <laughs> oh, sweet, cool. <laughs> don't, go, don't go to Bangladesh. OK, OK. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, you just said your legs are good. Let's talk about Rooney a bit more, because it's funny. Everybody in the media is slating him, but everybody within football, players, managers, still give him the time of day. So what are you guys seeing differently to what we're seeing differently? Because, like Troy was saying earlier, we don't judge things on just based st strictly on stats or what you see on match of the day. Um, Ro Rooney scoring goals was the Rooney that was doing well back in the day. Whereas now he's not the same player, doesn't penetrate the same, and he just maybe has a different appreciation. Instead of people looking at the way he's kind of, um, you could say, developed a new way of playing, like Scolzi did. Scolzi was a goal scoring midfield player, and then he became more of a quarterback, plays, played where more where Carrick's been playing his whole career, and I think Rooney can do the same. He's been doing it. He played well for me in the, in the, um, the Euros. Um, like I said, I'm a player looking... When I'm watching the game, I'm not just looking at what he does, I'm looking at where he moves, off the ball, and how he's dictating the game. He's decision-making, which is what really a good football is all about, your decision-making. So it's basically his game has matured, and like you said, we're, we're measuring him against 18-year-old Rooney, but his game's matured. He has a lot to offer in terms of experience and that England squad even if we saw the inform squad the team that we put up there that England squad as a whole is very young yeah, it's a young squad and I think that's uh, I don't I never look at age I always think the best players Troy was saying about the most informed players should be playing I'm not sometimes you could have a player who's like so they say um, f um, class is permanent and forms temporary so I'm not necessarily big on okay this guy's playing well mm. so we should be in the team because a player could, it could be your best players having an off day. I'm still going to want the best players on the pitch. Yeah. Within reason. Um, and I think I never look at whether it should be a young team, an old team, best football players, and try and create some cohesiveness, some good harmony in the team. And that is, I think, what England are missing. Okay, now let's get this tweet on the screen. This is for you, Rowan. It's from John Ricketts, a cracking player. He's a Spurs fan that left too soon. Any fan grief when you joined from the other side and best managers so thank you John for that and Rowan answer away when I joined from Arsenal I wasn't known I, I was known young. because I won two youth cups and I made my debut at 18 but I wasn't really well known enough to get any hate mail in Germany. I mean, you get the odd I got stuff more as I got older when they started looking back and I oh, paid for both and then I can't say what they were saying as you know <laughs> um, <laughs> and best manager for me 
Arsene Wenger, because he was just so calm. He was calm with everything. I remember one day I was walking in the corridor and he loved to be called boss, not gaffer, nothing like that. He wanted to be called boss. And I remember I was walking in the corridor and I said, I said, Arsene. <laughs> and um, you know, a young boy come from South London, you know. And then Pat Rice looked at me and he said, no, lad, I don't want to do the accent again. <laughs> I've I got to do it, I've got to do it. He said, hey, lad, it's boss to you, lad. That's not a good one, is it? Yeah. So, my producer just said that's better. You sound like you're from Bangladesh with oh, that. Oh, <laughs> so, um, so Arsene, he, he didn't actually tell me off himself. He was very calm about it, and they told me. And he, he heard me call him Arsene. They even pulled me up. And so you, you learn to kind of... You was always calm around him. He was very calculated in his training. How he, the, the information that you gave, you never, ever shouted at me. I was training with the first team for a couple of years. He was amazing. Glenn Hoddle was quality, quality coach, and I owe a lot to him because he actually gave me my, my games in the Premier yeah. League. But manager, he was necessarily the most tactful when he was speaking to I people. think we all know Glenn Hoddle is not yeah. very tactful. But amazing guy, amazing <laughs> coach, like way, above, way uh, before his time, but that was tactful. Now, I want him to be the next England manager. I don't think anyone's really listening to me, to be honest, but I want him to be the next England manager. Do you think he would... First of all, ever step back into that role, and am I right, or is is he done with that? Um, I would agree. I would love to see him in the England setup, but like I said about Arsene Wenger, I wouldn't like to see someone like that who has so much. He's got this abundance of knowledge. He's a very, very intellectual person when it comes to not just football, but in this case, football. So someone like him being in the England hot seat, where you're going, everyone's judging him. Oh, we're talking about him. I'll oh, get him out. He's lost a game. No, no, no. That's not enough because people got to look at. Like we're looking at now in the game, the game coming against Malta, but we have to start looking at things in a uh, wider scope. Yeah. So how we're producing our players and someone like Glenn will be fundamental for that. So I wouldn't want to see him in the hot seat. Throw Gareth in there, because the, no one's going to... The people won't be happy if he doesn't do well leading up to the World Cup and then he'll be out. Can Gareth go back to the under-21s if he has a disastrous... Because I know it's only four games, but... He, sh he should be able to. But what happens if it all goes so wrong? Like you said, the media just pick up on this stuff and destroy people. Yeah, but we've got to stop doing that and we've got to start governing each other and, and maybe allowing more, more um, football in... For people that have played football... Do the talking. Yeah. Do a lot of talking and maybe be more involved in the FA and stuff because you asked the question there and I'm not going to criticise you for asking the question, but it's interesting you asked him, is he going to be still inept enough to go back... <clears throat> To the under 21s, if he doesn't do of well, of course he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it's, it's but it's these kind of questions filter out in social media, and then it becomes the general consensus, and that's why it leaves us where we are. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting accused of starting okay. Southgate out. Listen, my only goal, my only goal is Toby Tarrant out, and that's why I'm wearing my tink top. He's coming out tonight. <laughs> um, what is? Oh, it's a hard one because you should never regret anything. But if you have any regrets, what are they? Mm. Maybe sometimes I can be a bit impulsive. When social media came out, um, players sometimes go through things. And I think, I think Gordon was saying about one of his players, he said that he f the player thought he was working hard enough yeah. and he thought he wasn't. And it was interesting because sometimes players, we do disagree. It's all opinions. And I remember I've been in situations, crazy one with David Pleat, um, at Toronto FC also, situations that people don't realise, it's a business, so you love it, it's what you do for a living, but it's a business, so when a, a gaffer wants you out and you haven't done anything, and then they're trying to force your hand and stuff like that, everyone's looking at, oh, why is Ron Ricketts not playing? Then they start to kind of guess, and you have your, your Twitter, you can let them know. But once you let them know, then you're the bad guy for letting them know the truth when you get, might be getting mistreated. So I probably wouldn't have tweeted some of the things that I tweeted. What did you tweet? Is it as bad as Balotelli? Like, I mean, what did Balotelli? What do I? Well, I mean, don't know. General life with him, but he tweets some bad stuff. Nah, you just tweet. I remember I was um, in. I tell you the one in India. The coach basically asked me to. I remember I played a couple of games. I didn't. I probably lost the ball twice mm. in two games. I'm. I'm a central midfield player, so I'm always remembering those things. And um, the coach pulled me and said, "Hey, Rowan." Come down and sat in his room. He had his towel around, his big moustache, and he was there. Is this this is not another I'm story not gonna, about Arsene being naked? No, it's an it? Indian okay. accent, but I'm not going to go for this. <laughs> um, and he basically said, he said, he said to me, he started a conversation. He said, "Don't worry, soon you'll get it. You'll get how we play." And I said, "Okay." I was just listening. He goes, 
You need to, he says, you're not Arsenal, Tottenham, whatever. you need to bring your level down to our level and to adapt. So then I'm sitting there listening. And so in the end, I ended up tweeting, and I'm not Iniesta, but I ended up tweeting something like, if you signed Iniesta, would you be asking the players to raise their level? And this is India. Yeah. Or would you be telling Iniesta to drop his level? And it just went boom. And before you know it, I was on my way, he was on his way. And it, it, it was, um, it, it provoked um, conversation and sparked interest in the media to what was going on at that club for years. And in the end, they happened to get that guy out who was actually stealing a lot of money from players. But I probably wouldn't have done that again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> Revenge is a game best played sweet, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> OK, so you've got a book out. Mm -hmm. What is in that book? Well, it's called Do You Really Want to Be a Pro Football Player? And it talks about um, my passion for football and how that passion kept me on a straight path as a kid because I was brought up in South London in Brixton. I was surrounded by a lot of friends that were stealing and selling Must drugs. Must be weird to see Brixton now for you, then. Uh, Brixton Village, yeah, they've got all of us out. When I say all of us, <laughs> the brothers, they've got all of us out. They've <laughs> 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 got all the brothers out, but it's nice, Brixton Village, more variety. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so the book basically talk, um, talks about it. It's talking to kids, but it's also talking to parents. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important they understand the journey. And the journey, not at the end of it, is a pot of gold all the time. Do you know what I mean? And along the way, sometimes you meet some great people, great contacts, you learn different skills, and you can use them to forge a career in a different field sometimes. Because I think it's about 2%, if that, actually going to make it through. I also have some other children's books called um, Adventures, The Adventures of Roro. Yeah. So it's seven different books in seven different places that I've played around the world. Teaching children life lessons and they're available in ebook format okay. online. You what? should get them. Okay, I'm going to get them. Yeah. Are you trying to say that the kids' book is more suitable for me? For yourself, <laughs> yeah, you look kind of like <laughs> playful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what is <coughs> the. If you. Well, I'm going to ask about your future, but if you could tell your kids one bit of advice, what would it be? I've got one. Mm -hmm. Don't put it out there because I think my son's mother's watching, so don't say kids again. Okay. No, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> like, um, if I Any additional Rowans? We do apologise, yeah. I, don't be scared to fail. You just, that's it. That's, that's it. Don't be scared to fail. Go for it. Don't care about what anybody thinks of you, uh, unless it's probably your parents, but just whatever you love in life, go for it. If you fall down, get up again and just keep going. It's just the fear. I think fear blocks so many of us from achieving like half of our potential. Definitely. OK, so what is the future if Gordon can't come up trumps, which we're hoping he can? Where, where do you realistically, if you could pick anything right now that is a realistic future, what is it? Um, I want to sign for a team immediately. Like I said, I'm speaking to a team at the moment. I would like to just sign and play football. I miss playing football every day. I, was too much, I played some pre-season games over here, so I got some match, fit, match fitness, but then I miss just going into training, not necessarily every day, just touching the ball. And it just, that's what I've been doing for 17 years. Um, I've been doing a lot of media gigs, uh, so that's going well. And Ever a manager? Yeah, I've got my, my UEFA A licence, so I would like to definitely get into management. Um, possibly here, but possibly in South America also. You like, um, you like Ecuador, you're going back there. I love it there, <laughs> Colombia. And I dance a lot of salsa. OK. So um, at the moment I'm probably introducing the salsa <laughs> programme into some schools. OK, amazing. Rowan, we could be here all night, but thank you so much for joining us. Rowan Ricketts, everybody.